to 500 millimetres is forecast to fall over the next three days, prompting warnings of dangerous flooding and landslides in areas already saturated. So this is the new member to the Phil's fam. Now I understand it's not a motorbike, but this is actually a car that I've owned for 13 years. It lived at my mum's place for the entire 13 years because I lived in apartments in Sydney, could not fit this anywhere in the car parks down there. So she stored it at her place and she just had it shipped to me just a couple of weeks ago. She's an absolute legend, thanks mum. So I'm so stoked to have it back in Melbourne with me. Yes, and obviously now I have the space. To, to keep it here nice and safe. The battery died, so last night I tried cranking it over just to see if it would get going. But the battery just died, so I had that on charge overnight. It's a 1978 HZ Kingswood. Let's take a look. Now, obviously, <laughs> she's a bit of a fixer-upper. So there, are, there is rust all in, the, all in the standard spots here in the cows, but these you can literally replace the whole thing, cut it out, weld a new one in, boom, the rust is gone. Glass all needs to come out. Um, get rid of all these, replace all these chrome parts around the windscreen, around the doors. I might actually de-chrome it and put black strips instead. I'm thinking of going like a matte black for the paint, like the paint's done, or crow's feeding. Um, but, you know, it was under a cover, but it was still sort of like outside, so it did get weathered a little bit. Fish oiled it 10 years ago um, in all the, all the spots to help prevent the rust from happening. Down the bottom there, standard. There's not too much rust around here, which is awesome. So this is like the main body panel, um, but usually they rust so bad all around here, like you can see all the fish oil <laughs> residue all up there as well. Not bad. It'll be interesting to see what happens though when we <laughs> strip all the paint off and um, see what's underneath. That tire there, that's in the back, that's actually punctured. All the tires are like a thousand years old, so they need to get replaced, but I'm gonna put the exact ones, uh, the exact same ones on. The front, I'm gonna go a bit narrower, so they're two, four, five, it's on the front and rear. A bit too wide, there's no power steering. The steering wheel's a sports steering wheel. I didn't put it in there, that's what came with it. The cool thing about this, this was my very first time I had a power window <laughs> in a car. So this, this back window here is actually powered which is awesome. This is 78, guys, which is, which is nuts. So you turn the key, and that's how the window goes down. It's a little bit, <laughs> how you going? And then, let's take the keys out, and then you have the lever on the inside, and that's how, that's how you get in the back. And there it all is there. I had this registered for, say, six months um, back in 2010, and we went for a mad road trip from Sydney to Newcastle. It's not that far, but we did it over three days. We camped out in the back. That's why I love wagons. You can just camp out. Obviously, like, I play double bass as well, so storing the double bass in there in wagons is much easier than sedans. But so much fun. And then having the back window down, cruising down in summertime, all the windows open, loving it. I wired up a little switch here for the interior light, which does not work anymore. But yeah, so the interior in here, like that, that side panel is pretty good. Both of the side panels are actually pretty good. This all needs to be completely redone. Um, there's rust here, so this is gonna be a bit of a mofo to cut out on each side. And the tailgate, this all needs work as well. The power window is not so great. And all the rubbers right around, whole rubber kit, new rubbers in, away you go. If you didn't think it would get any worse, it does. Um, but the cool thing about this, you can literally buy that entire panel. Um, and I think, I think it comes up to about there. You can see that mark there. It goes up to about there. And you can, you can literally cut this out and then put the new one in, weld it in, no more rust. Don't have to worry about a thing. Oh, the squeaky doors, look at all that. Woo -hoo. Okay, this is the interior. Now, yeah, everything's all, <laughs> roof needs to be done. Um, you know, globes hanging out. Dash, this is out of a GTS. Uh, but the GDS dashes are the good dashes. So you, yellow needles, round dials, usually the square and just white dial, uh, white needles. But this is the cool one. 
and it used to be a three speed, three on the tree, doo -doo -doo -sh, but now it's um, a four on the floor, full on manual instead of auto. So they did a conversion, the person that bought this before me or had this before me and they butchered the tunnel, they absolutely butchered it. The clutch on this thing, <laughs> it is like a, it's all cable, it's not hydraulic. So it's very, very heavy. It's got the fluffy dice, need the fluffy dice. Yeah, center console can be all replaced. You can buy all these brand new. Um, the seats, I like the seats, I like the colors. They're just some little little repair jobs there, little holes, but otherwise I dig them, I like them. Don't know, don't know about that. <laughs> it's a back seat, bench, it's all cool. Um, these in here are my thermo fans, so I'll show you the engine very soon, but they're my thermo fans, which need to be installed. But yeah, that's how it looks on the inside. Oh yeah, and the, and the door trims are shot. <laughs> how good does this look? So the previous owner had all this carpet there, they just glued it on there. Um, this is the one I did ages ago, um, but it can still do it with a, I think you can buy the four of them for 750 bucks now. It's so good, 10 years later, you can literally buy everything for these cars now, like brand new, aftermarket, yeah. Um, and fiberglass as well to help prevent rust in the future. Uh, but yeah, ooh, I love the way they close. And the squeak, squeaks can stay. So this front end is out of a Premier, I believe. The standard ones are just these single lights on either side, but these has got the twin, which I really like. And the grill's are a little bit different. And this is all a little bit different. You can buy all them brand new now, fiberglass, which is cool. This is all fish oil residue, which I'm not sure how the hell to get off. I think I'm gonna have to just get a new bumper bar. And so the engine in this bad boy is a 253 V8. They're quite solid, they're quite reliable, low powered. They're a 4.3 litre, so they're quite small as well for a V8. But these things are, I, I, like, I love the sound of them. They just last, hey. So I'm an auto, auto electrician by trade. So I decided to at least tidy up the engine bay because it's just a mess. You know, these old cars, wires are just everywhere. I remember like harnesses down here, melting away and everything, so everything's all, you know, fairly good. It's actually still pretty good. It's just dirty. I've got relays, everything's fused, circuits are protected. Headlights, there's all relays on them now. So before they used to just run full load through the switches, which just kills the switches. But I would like to move all this into like the glove box maybe, or cover this up somehow, because I just, I don't like the look of that. <laughs> I'd love to get like a 350 Chev in there, <laughs> which would be just insanely cool. But I think, the next one up from the 253 is the 308, and I think you can, you can stroke them out to like a 355 anyway. So I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just play with it for a little bit. It still needs a lot of work. Like if I'm gonna spray it and do everything, like the engine's gonna come out, the glass is all gonna come out, and literally just a, a monster mega job. Check out the fan, hey, this is why I need that thermo fan in. This is just the full on mounted one, not even a clutch, so, and there's no fan shroud to direct the air, so it just overheats. You sit in traffic, pff, that needle just goes sky high. So with the thermo fans, they're on there, they're electronic, so there's less engine load, which is awesome. Extra horsepower. And I'll wire up a switch on the inside as well, so that, you know, if I see that it is starting to get pretty hot, I can just flick the, th the fans on, and then pff, they kicked in, and away they go. So this wasn't running when it came here. The oil was 10 years old. I wasn't really gonna try to kick it over or anything. So yesterday I dropped the oil, put some fresh oil in it, and I'll leave this oil in there for about a week or two, let it cycle through the engine a bit, clear out all the sludge. Because when I did drain the oil, there were some little chunks coming out. And it wasn't metal, thank goodness, but it was just sludge. Just been sitting there for a long time. I changed over all the plugs. The plugs were pretty much all fouled up. That's all the cold starting over the years. What else did I do? I topped up the radiator just with water for now. Um, the radiator cap needs replacing, that's, that's leaking. But I'll put some in inhibitor through that as well just to stop it from corroding from the inside. And the carby, the carby is a quadrajet carby, so it's a four barrel. Um, it's, it's a little bit big for this engine. It's not a, it's not a powerful car by any means. It's, it's like, I think it's pushing out 150 horsepower at the flywheel, if that. So it's not, a, <laughs> it's not a racing car, it's not a high performance car at all. But the Quadrajet, they're, they're reliable, they're, they're good carbies as well. So I'll clean that out, carby cleaner. Tried to clean as much of the crap out of it that I could. Stale fuel in the tank. So <laughs> this is my makeshift fuel tank right here, little bottle. It's a mechanical pump, so it just literally sucks from there. <laughs> straight into the carby, boom, away you go. I had to prime the carby with fuel to, to get it going at the start because it just, it just couldn't. It was just killing the battery, so I literally poured fuel into the carby. So the main goal for today was to be able to get the engine running so that I can drive it in and out because I'm using this as a full-on photography studio. 
um, and I can't with this car here, and I don't want to keep pushing it in and out. It's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a light car. <laughs> I think we are ready to fire it up. You guys got to hear this. It's so good. There we go. Fire up. Straight away. Oh, damn it. <laughs> The fumes, the fumes are real. So this is gonna be here now. You're gonna see this quite a bit. I am going to slowly, very, very slowly, just do things to it. I'm not gonna do the body work or anything here. Obviously, I'm gonna take it somewhere and then just get them to like, you know, get into it. Paint as well, I hate sanding and all that sort of stuff. Body work, that's someone else's job, man. I'm not into it at all. And hey, massive thank you to Nanlite, these guys. So that little clip that you saw just earlier, that was completely filmed. All the lighting was filmed with these awesome, awesome tubes. The, the Nanlite Peve Tube 230X. Thank you so much, Nanlite, for sending them out to me. The lightning, the TV on the face, and then obviously all the, all the lighting that was all around here. That was, that was all on these guys, which is incredible. And then they make an awesome, they make an awesome work light. <laughs> I had these going all day yesterday. It was so sick. So handy. So thank you again, Nanlite. Check them out if you'd like some sick lights. Check them out. Links are in the description. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next vid. I'm going to take this thing outside. Let's go.